This is a ramping up your English book review. Reading a book about an instructional theme can make English more comprehensible. Seeing a movie based on that book can do even more to develop tools for English proficiency. If you want to have fun doing this, and I suggest making English learning as fun as possible, read Polar Express, written and illustrated by Chris Van Alsberg. This Caldecott Award winner takes readers on a wild fantasy train ride to the North Pole using much of the lore of American railroads. The story begins in Grand Rapids, Michigan in the 1950s. The plot begins when a boy awakes on Christmas Eve to see a train called the Polar Express. The conductor invites him aboard and the adventure begins. I suggest reading the book first. It has beautiful illustrations that will provide many context clues for the readers. Then rent the movie to see how the story is treated and of course to see the awesome special effects. A fun way of supporting your English acquisition is to read Polar Express. At the least, it'll be a fun experience, and you'll think of it every time you drink hot chocolate. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. Our goal is to help you elevate your level of English proficiency in a way that causes the least amount of stress. Our approach is to make English language learning interesting and fun by using a thematic approach. Our first theme is trains and railroads. We're going to ride the California Zephyr westbound again, but first let's learn how to write a persuasive letter in English. We'll use the situation we explored before the break as our example. Our letter will be to a member of Congress urging them to support long distance train travel in the United States. Now persuasive language differs from expressing an opinion you're actually trying to get someone to do something. In this case, let's assume the letter is going to the congressman that represents the district in which you live. The first step is to tell him or her briefly what you want them to do. So let's start with this sentence. I'm writing to urge your support for Amtrak's long distance trains. Now let's list three reasons why they should do that. These reasons should be based on facts that can be verified by the representative or their, their staff. Long distance trains are the only transportation available for people in some of the towns they serve. Long distance trains are increasingly popular with the public and long distance trains are essential to maintaining a true network of rail transportation in the United States. Now we'll take each of these facts and add details to each one. Among America's aging population, an increasing number of people are unable to fly or drive long distances. Like those who live in smaller cities that have lost air connections, they rely on Amtrak's long distance trains to travel. Disconnecting rail service would leave this growing population isolated from their families and from critical services. Now, let's add detail to the second part. Over the past decade, ridership on Amtrak's long distance trains has increased. This trend is likely to continue with more and more people discovering the comfortable and low stress service that the long distance trains provide. Now, let's add detail to the third point. The cities and towns of the West are essential to maintaining a viable rail transportation system. Without service to these population centers, the remaining system would dwindle. The rail system in the United States was expanded to the West Coast to bind the country together. We need to continue these passenger trains to safeguard this unity. Now we need to repeat what we want this representative to do, but in a different way than our letter opening, linking this desire to the reasons we just explained. Your support is needed to continue Amtrak's long distance service. Your opposition to schemes that seek to discontinue Amtrak's long distance trains, like insisting that Amtrak not lose money on dining car service, will be critical to saving these essential trains. It's equally important that Amtrak receive sufficient funding for their operation. An increasing number of rail passengers in our district are counting on you to stand firm for our long distance trains. Now let's look at some of the words we use that indicate that this is a persuasive letter. I urge you to. Now urge is a strong word 
It's not rude or bossy, but it carries the expectation that you want them to act. You're not wishing or hoping or suggesting. You're not saying, we think you were thinking maybe you might act. No, urge is derived from the word urgent. It's the word you want. Only transportation available. These words indicate that you're not trying to preserve a luxury or a privilege. You're saying this is important. Increasingly popular, not only will they want to be on the right side of a trend, but these words negate the outdated argument that no one rides these trains. It's also a point that's easily established with facts. Long distance trains are essential. The word essential goes beyond saying they're important. The word essential implies that the rail network cannot exist without the long distance trains. Viable. The word viable means workable or functionable. It demonstrates a level of sophistication and even nuance. Some measure of service might survive the absence of long distance trains, but it would not really function in a meaningful way. Closing the letter by thanking the representative for his or her consideration is simply a courtesy, but doing so adds to the status accorded to the writer. Now you can add facts directly to the three points you made in the body of the letter, or you can footnote them to references. A great place to get facts about passenger trains and the issues involved is a website of the National Association of Railroad Passengers. Visit nap.org for information. That's NARP, nap.org. They are a respected organization, and they're always careful to check out their facts before posting them. I have a link to their website on my website, letscreate.org. Now, if you feel unprepared to write a persuasive letter on your own, consider this lesson an exposure to a process. We'll go into greater details in future programs. If you decide that you will write a letter and send a persuasive letter to your congressman or senator, you can find the mailing address online and in front of some phone directories as well as the editorial page of your local newspaper. For now, let's journey on one of those trains we're working to save. Here's part two of our journey westward on the California Zephyr.